Hello everyone. Today I am going to talk about the well-known Monty Hall problem, but actually its generalized form. Since you may not be aware of the Monty Hall problem, I will first explain the Monty Hall problem in the simplest form and then the generalized form. Okay, let's get started. The Monty Hall problem is as follows. The name of the problem is actually the name of the host of a TV show, Monty Hall. In this problem, we have three doors, behind two of them are goats, and behind one of them is a car. Suppose that you are the contestant of a competition and you are offered these three doors. You will choose one door, but after that, the host comes in and opens a door and reveals a goat. Now the host asks you if you would switch the door to the one that you didn't choose or you would prefer to keep your first choice. Our first problem specifically is what is the probability of winning the car if you switch to the other door when one of the goats is revealed. This is actually our first problem the well-known Monty Hall problem. Now in the second question, we are going to generalize this question and extend the number of doors to n doors. We now have n doors and the host opens g doors. In the figure shown here, n is 14 and g is 7. The question is the same. What is the probability of winning the car if you switch to one of the remaining doors when the goats are revealed. In summary, we have two questions. In the first question, we have three doors and one goat is revealed. And in the second question, we have n doors in total and g doors are revealed. What are the probability of winning by switching the door from the first chosen door to the one of the remaining doors? Think about it. I will give you the answer in the rest of the video. Okay, we first answer the first question and use the same logic to answer the second question. In the first question, before choosing any door, the chance of winning is one third and it is equal for all the doors. Let's assume that you choose the door on the left. As I told before, the chance of winning is one third. But the more important point is that the chance of losing or actually the chance of having the car behind one of the doors that you didn't choose is two-third. The host opens the one in the middle. When one of the goats are revealed, the chance of having the car behind one of the doors that you didn't choose will belong to that one single remaining door. Therefore, if you switch the door, the chance of winning would be two-third compared to your current chance, which is still one-third. We use the same logic for the second problem. Before revealing any goats, the chance of winning the car is equal for all the doors and it is equal to 1 over n. Let's show it by p sub win before. Now the chance of losing, or in other words, the chance of having the car behind one of the doors that you didn't choose is n minus 1 over n. When g goats are revealed, n minus g minus 1 doors will remain. And the chance of having the car behind one of these doors is equally distributed among these doors. Therefore, if you switch the door, the chance of winning would be n minus 1 over n times n minus g minus 1. Here in this final equation, if we set n equal to 3 and g equal to 1, which is our first problem, we will get 2 thirds, which is equal to the answer we found earlier.
to have a better insight into the relation between the N and G and the chance of winning the car, we depict this equation for different values of N and G. Here the horizontal axis is G, the number of doors that the host reveals, and the vertical axis is the chance or probability of winning. Each curve represents a different N or a different number of total number of doors. We have n from 3 to 20. g equals to 0 means that none of the goats are revealed, and the probability of winning in this case shows the probability of winning without changing the door, or actually the probability of winning of the first choice. The main observation is that all the functions are increasing. This means that switching the door is always a better strategy. However, when the number of doors is large and G is small, for example, when N is equal to 20 and G is between 1 and 5, the chance of winning does not increase that much if we switch the door. As you can see, the curve is almost horizontal. For N equals to 3 and G equals to 1, we get 0.66, which is equal to 2 thirds what we found for our first problem. In general, the chance of winning significantly increases when the number of doors or G gets closer to N. This is what we expect. That was for today. I hope you liked the video. If you liked it, make sure to subscribe. Bye.